I'm on that wall. I love having my picture up there. That's a picture of, of me and my crew. That crew, at a moment's notice, was willing to go out and do whatever it takes to make sure that we help somebody else. I'm second generation. My dad started in the same volunteer fire department in Hicksville, New York. So pretty much I followed along that line in the family business. Check 16, catch your fire, smoking flames coming from the house. You throw a city until heaven's on scene, single story structure, the flames showing from the roof. It's interesting, being 44 years now in, a, in the fire service, I've seen the change. It's a lot different. It was run like a boot camp when I, when I started. It was, you know, my way or the highway. That doesn't work anymore. And, and unfortunately, it hurt us in the job when we talked about dealing with bad things. So now we see a, a fire service, emergency services group, even the military, where they're not coping as well as they should. We begin with breaking news out of Lee County where crews are battling a brush fire that's burning in North Fort Myers. It's uh, the anniversary's coming up on the 18th of January. I lost my partner in the line of duty fighting fire. William Ziegler, Ziggy, we ran out of water, pulled the truck over to the side, waiting for another engine to fill us up, and turned around and dropped that. We got a report of one injured firefighter at this time. PD advised that we have uh, right now a firefighter down. I worked them. I worked them for seven minutes. I know this. I can tell you right now. I can feel the coldness from the night right now. I can feel it on my neck. So the hard part for me was when they pulled me out. They literally two guys grabbed me and pulled me off. Him. So who walks through the door? The widow, his wife. What do you think the first thing she said to me? You can't let Billy die. So what do you think happened? So I internalized that. And I dealt with guilt for that. And it bothered me. So what I wound up doing, and this happens to us, is we can push our families aside. We can, you know, this job can affect you. And that's what happened. I actually went into counseling over Ziggy because I was now starting to feel the effects of, of the loss. I was, you know, every thinking about it, uh, I was very sad, uh, you know, there were times I was breaking down. I started reading things about stress and bad calls, because we never talked about it. And I'm like, oh crap, that's me. I got tired of crying, being sad, pushing people away. And that's what I use today. When I talk to an emergency service worker, I will tell them, oh, I had a bad call. I've had bad calls. You cannot change what you saw. You can only change how you handle it. My focus today is when I teach stress awareness. And then the other one is suicide prevention because this has become that, that big of a problem. If an emergency service worker has a bad call, we go out and we sit with them. Because one of the th problems that people have in this job is they believe it's only happening to them. As long as there's gonna be people that are going to be in crisis and they're gonna be having bad things happening, we're gonna respond to it. So you're not alone. The stigma in the job is mental health is taboo. Any firefighter, cop, or medic walks into their agency and says, hey, I've got, I've got cancer. They will look at you and go, oh, okay, you know, they'll understand, oh my God, what do we got to do for you? You send one of your emergency service workers in and says, hey, listen, I'm having psychological issues. They don't know what to do. Or if you got a drug or alcohol problem. Every time I do a class, I tell every agency, I said, if you don't think that you have somebody that has an alcohol, drug problem, they're having some type of a, a disorder, and it could be depression, anxiety, whatever, you're, you're mistaken. And we gotta remember, we're an agency of human beings. I try to tell folks now when I deal with death and dying, I tell folks grief is a place where not only you can look at what you've lost, but it's an also a place where you need to go and find out what you loved, you cherished, and, and you have great memories. That's how I'm surviving.
When I look at the wall at Mission Barbecue, I see heroes. When you serve, you are a hero. And you should deserve the honor and respect because you are willing to put your life on the line. Not only were they willing to put their physical being in harm's way, but now we're seeing, and now it's becoming more pronounced, that they're also putting their emotional and mental life on the line. It's a wall of heroes.